So I'm, I'm actually a network guy, so <laughs> it will be difficult to follow <laughs> that presentation. And to g go even further with my weaknesses, I'm actually not a network security guy. So I'm just a network guy. I actually do Wi-Fi architectures at Orange. And sometimes last week, at the end, my someone comes to me and say, Vlad, uh, you have to do a presentation for DevCamp. You have to propose the subject. You have to do the presentation. And you also have to present it. OK, so I said, what can I, what can I say? What can I say to some guys that are expert in security? What can I say to guys that are spending their 80, 80 to 100 percent of their jobs working on, on security? So I thought that I can share with you uh, what is what was my challenge in terms of security? What's my what are the challenges that I'm facing uh, in uh, developing services? Because I think that, uh, like it was mentioned before, collaboration and sharing it's the way to making the world more secure so i selected a fancy title it's secure the openness the operator challenge where i just say the challenge that we are facing as the operator now is the fact that we have to be more open to our customers but in the mean in the same time making it secure so making them feel safe uh, what I will talk about, it's just presenting the challenge. I already uh, skipped a bit and told you some, some in, in the intro. I will talk about how, what are our services on, on Wi-Fi, how we are making it secure through captive portal authentication, uh, SIM-based authentication, uh, voice over Wi-Fi security, what we are using in voice over Wi-Fi a new service, and how are we localizing the Wi-Fi attacks in the, in the real world. So we at Orange, we have uh, five fundamental values to which we have to, let's say, treat our customers. Because we are a service-based company, so we have to have some values uh, through which we guide everything we do. So we have to be simple. We have to be surprising, we have to be dynamic, honest, but the, the question comes, how can we make this secure? Because we have to be simple and open, surprising. These are not treats of a secure network. These are not treats of a secure, uh, secure service. We live in a hyper-connected society. These are some infographics from my group that internet users spend 4.8 hours online each day on their computers and 2.1 hours online on their cell phones. So not only that we have to give a secure service, it's actually th that we have to give a secure service that the customers are using uh, pretty much every, uh, hour, every hour of their life. So it's not that, OK, so he spends uh, five minutes doing this, we have to make it secure. No, he spends eight hours surfing the internet. We have to make it secure. It's, let's say, the service he, ac uh, he is accessing most of his time. In the network. We live in a, like I mentioned, now we have to make it secure for our customers. But now we are not living only in the people world, in people internet world. We are living in the uh, connected object world. So we have connected TV, smart TVs. We have smart watches, home appliances. We have connected cars, video cameras. We have scales. I know lots of guys don't want to have connected scales so they can tell you online your weight, but now they are doing it. We have, all, uh, we have connected music players. So everything is connected now. We are not uh, making the world uh, safer only for people. We have to make it even for objects. Or we have to protect the network from objects. We are living in a connected world that there are exist even connected irons, and they are used by spies. So the BBC reports that a Russian group uncovered an embedded Wi-Fi card inside an iron. 
Apparently, it would attach to the nearby uh, Wi-Fi network and uh, insert a vi viruses. So you see, Wi-Fi is uh, really a great tool that even spies can use it. So I think you know about Wi-Fi some things. Now I go into my, let's say, expertise. It's based on the 800 to 11 standards. And lots of people see like the m there is the new low uh, step in the Maslow hierarchy. So you have the fi <laughs> just below the physiological needs. Now it seems that uh, your need is Wi-Fi. And it seems that there is a new even lower pyramid and it's the battery on your phone. I don't know. I don't know about you, but when I'm without battery on my phone, I I tend to I'm even more nervous than I am now when I'm speaking to you. So, what's the general expectation about the Wi-Fi networks? Because you know, when you are using a VPN, uh, you know you have to be secure. When you are using a mobile network service, everybody know that it has to be secure. But for Wi-Fi, no. Wi-Fi, it's supposed to solve all problems. It's supposed to be free. It's supposed to be open. It's supposed to be always working, always fast. So again, this, is, uh, this, this was one of the biggest challenge. So uh, how much involved are we in Wi-Fi in Torrance, Romania? We have 5,000 access points. We are handling over 30,000 simultaneous clients around almost uh, three, 300,000 monthly users. And the average tr daily traffic is uh, three terabytes. We're offering a uh, Wi-Fi opera uh, wi operator, the public service, that includes two SSIDs that I'm going to talk about. We're offering also business services, both B2B and B2B2C, so both for business customers or for businesses that want to offer some Wi-Fi to their clients. We have business mobile Wi-Fi, where we uh, offer uh, on-the-go services for Wi-Fi. We have business retail analytics, where we do some localized uh, localized service, some analytics based on the location of the users, and our voice over Wi-Fi calling a service that, from my opinion, is really, really great. But, you know, I don't know what your experience using home Wi-Fi. For me, it's, it's uh, uh, now that I'm starting working on it, it's much easier, but I remember when I was a college student, I didn't know anything about Wi-Fi. I just knew that uh, when the Wi-Fi wasn't working, I just, I feel like I, I can't, it, it's something that I'm entering and I don't know nothing about. And uh, what I wanted to do is just call someone, say, hey, come and fix my Wi-Fi. So uh, this, this uh, tranquility that we are trying to offer to our customers, we are trying to make sure that we are offering a service and they can use it always, and they can use it in a, in a safe environment. So the first challenge for us, when we first started doing uh, the Wi-Fi uh, initiative for B2B clients, was to create a public Wi-Fi infrastructure that is secure and easy to connect. So what we created was an SSID, a network that was open uh, to our customers. So it was not, not no password that you have to enter. Uh, well then the user will connect, uh, he will open the browser, and he will be automatically re uh, re redirected to a captive portal, that like the one that you are seeing there. In the captive portal, they are inputting their MSISDN, their phone number. They will receive an SMS with their password or directly uh, authentication URL. They just push it and they will have automatic re-authentication. So in more technical terms, I'm trying to put here, we have the Wi-Fi controller, we have a captive uh, portal platform. So the device will try to connect to uh, any HTTP server. The Wi-Fi controller will redirect the traffic, the, the TCP SIM, to the captive portal. The captive portal will then use the, use the, uh, the existing uh, connection to authenticate the user. So the user will use this authentication, this MSISDN, but for our business uh, clients, we have 
multiple authentication methods. We have vouchers. We have uh, some password and username authentication. Some customers just want to collect, uh, collect some data. After that authentication happened through the, with the captive between the captive portal and the user, the captive portal just indicates to the user, uh, redirects the user to, uh, to the controller URL, where the controller URL will uh, connect to the controller. The controller will trigger a radius uh, access request uh, to the, okay, so now I've seen that I <laughs> there were some steps. So this step one, when the, the redirection happens, then the user authenticates with the captive portal. The captive portal will indicate the controller URL that uh, the user will have to access in step three. And in step four, the rad a radius request will be, will be triggered toward the captive portal platform, to which the captive portal platform will accept the request, of course, if the authentication was performed accordingly. So this is what we came with. It's, let's say, a standard uh, connection used for, uh, for authenticating the user over Wi-Fi. Uh, it's used in lots of places, so we thought it was good. So let's see what we solved from what we had to do and what we are still have to work on. So the SSID was open, so the clients could j always enter and, and authenticate. Uh, only one information is requested on the captive portal, just the MSISDN, which is pretty basic, available to both mobile and desktop uh, devices. On the security part, we were happy. It was not an easy task to do that. We could always make sure that the client that are, is using the, the network, it's the one that is uh, really having that identity, the MSISDN. So I cannot say if uh, I, I authenticate it on the, on the network, it must have my permission to, to use it because it uses this uh, uh, phone number verification. But we still lacked a lot of stuff that was required for us. Because uh, we had the problem that, you know, you have to open the browser to authenticate. And some devices, uh, some devices are just, when they see a captive network, they just try to connect to the, to the network. To the network and try to connect to the, to the captive portal automatically. But some devices just, you have to open your browser to, to use it. So that is still uh, an issue. They are, it's not making the customer really uh, feel like it's an easy network to, to be used. So it's, it's still a problem that we have to resolve and also requires some manual configuration from, from the user. He has to input their MSISDN and stuff and also their password after they are receiving the, pa the, the SMS. Another problem uh, is that the fact that we have to really make sure that, I, I know that for a security conference this is uh, some basic stuff that I'm telling, the traffic with the captive portal, it might not be encrypted. So we have to make sure that we have a HTTPS uh, available server with domains, so we are not, uh, let's say, vulnerable to some hijacking uh, of our access point, so some let's say, uh, black hat guy, I don't know, this is the black, black hat, no, the attacker. Some black hat guy can uh, always create an SSID, can create a, a, a captive portal similar to ours and can collect MSISDNs of our customers wherever they are. So the solution for this is that we inputted the HTTPS connection to our captive portal. So. We encourage our customers, if it's not at the HTTPS and verified, you don't uh, input your MSISDN there. Uh, also, the traffic network is not encrypted. So besides mm, doing, let's say, normal stuff, uh, using HTTP traffic, every, everyone connected to the network and or just monitoring the network could, could hear your, uh, uh, your traffic. And uh, like I mentioned, there are uh, there that type of authentication is open to, to some attackers. So we got a challenge. We have to be more open and simple and more secure. So I said, <laughs> when, I, when they said that to me, I said, what? So you, do you want more secure 
even more security, higher security level, and making it even more simple for our customers? So they said, yes, you have to, we have to do it. So from the simpleness point, so what, what we saw that we have to do? We saw that we have to automate the connection process, so the clients don't have to, to do uh, lots of steps to connect, and uh, use our, uh, the ex some existing credentials that every one of our clients are using already. From security point of view, we try to use WPA2 encryption and uh, 800-21 X authentication. This is the, let's say, the most secure authentication and encryptions that are available in the Wi-Fi world. So what we came up to? We came up to EAP SIM and EAP AK authentication, uh, an authentication that it's using the SIM credentials already stored in your phone. The user doesn't have to introduce anything, just the first, the first setup uh, or the first step of the network, just push it, select the network and select EAP SIM or EAP uh, AKA authentication. And after that, the authentication will be automatic, just like in your home, wherever you go and there is an orange uh, Wi-Fi network. There is also the possibility through Passpoint, a technology that we are supporting, that the devices will connect uh, automatically from the first point. So the actually the user doesn't have to do anything ever. Just They are just connecting automatically. Uh, the, the identity of the user that will, uh, he will use for uh, performing this authentication will be the EMC that is stored in the, in the SIM card and the key that will be further used for uh, encrypting the traffic between the user and the network, it's, uh, it's negotiated through the EEP process. So for the security part, we are, like I mentioned, we are using the AW801X uh, uh, authentication that is using a, a supplicant, that is the user, the authenticator, that is the Wi-Fi controller for us, and an authentication server, usually a, a AAA server. The conversation between the, the controller and the AAA server, it's uh, using the RADIUS uh, protocol that is used for uh, normally authentication within uh, the network. So now I'm going to just go through the basic steps of uh, authentication. So what happens is the user will try to connect through the controller, will send its identity, then there will be a response saying what versions are available for uh, doing the authentication. Uh, the uh, device will respond with a nonce and an MT and a selected version. That information is uh, sent further to the AAA and it also contains uh, EMC, the EMC of the user. So our AAA, it has to have an interconnection with the HLR, the HLR that is storing all the security, inform the security information for encrypting the traffic in, in our 2G, 3G, uh, mobile networks, so actually they are using the same type of authentication and it receives the triplets that are will be used for, for the authentication. I'm not going through all the uh, encryption details and all the how the security has happened because it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit uh, long to, to go through. But after that the AAA will retain some of the information, will generate a random value and send a challenge to the controller that will be forwarded to the, to the device. The device will perform the GSM algorithm, verifies the ATMAC, derives session key, then it will, to, will respond to the, to the challenge. If we want to authenticate based on some values, like, I don't know, the user has a APN an APN that uh, allows him access to the internet and allow all, only that users to, to connect to the network. Uh, the AAA will also do a profile retrieval. Based on that profile retrieval, we will give access to, to the client. Uh, the further key negotiation will be done on the session, uh, session key. Uh, Pretty basically the same, it's the EAP AK authentication. It just a step uh, skips some, some, some of the steps, but it, it's a more secure because the EAP AKA will authenticate both the server and the user. 
while in the EAP, EAP SIM, uh, only the network authenticates and allows access to, to the users. So we are uh, highly recommending for all our customers to use EAP aka authentication because it also authenticates that the network is the one that they are they are want to connect to. So how secure is it? We saw that we we already told that uh, the eight hundred one x authentication it's one of the sec most secure that we are of we can use on on a Wi-Fi network, but. Uh, it's still there are still some some vulner vulnerabilities that we have to 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 make sure that we are they are treated. So the basic EAP protocol is not encrypted. So the exchanges between the EAP SIM and AKA in the uh, communication with the controller and the access point, it's not encrypted. Thus, the MC value, the MC of the user can be uh, so, uh, seen by a, a possible uh, passive attacker. So for that part, the IMC protocol has already created a pseudonym type of authentication, where the pseudonym is derived by both the users and the AAA. So for the f after the first authentication, the IMC is never exchanged between the network. Uh, so not uh, the pa a passive attacker cannot intercept the actual MC of the user. Uh, this is the solution. <laughs> but what can uh, we do? We saw that the, co the devices are connecting automatically to Tor networks. So what can happen? An, uh, an active attacker uh, might create the same SSID Orange are using and request for a full authentication ID from the customer. Uh, the solution for that is that uh, devices should implement a conservative peer policy that only responds to the request for permanent identity when no pseudonym identity is available. So even if a passive attacker will create uh, a hotspot, an active attacker will create a hotspot for us uh, the div and will ask for the full authentication identity, the device will refuse to answer with uh, its MC. So this is all for the security on the on our operator Wi-Fi challenge. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our voice over Wi-Fi service. What it is, what is the user experience? You just have to enable the Wi-Fi calling from your device, connect to any Wi-Fi network, not our own. Of course, we recommend to, we recommend to use our own network when you are in a hotspot. Connect to any Wi-Fi network. The logo will automatically change from Volti to voice over Wi-Fi, indicating that now you can place voice over Wi-Fi calls, and all your traffic for voice services will be done uh, through internet now. Basically, what we are offering in this service, it's just a SIP-based calling that is used for, for voice over IP services using our operator IMS infrastructure. The access to, to IMS is secured through an IPsec tunnel to, the EP, to an equipment that we call the EPDG. For authenticating the user and allowing it access to our network, we use uh, IQv2 authentication with the EAP authentication that I just uh, mentioned above. And this time, the EPDG will, will use a diameter interface to connect to the, to the AAA that is performing the authentication. And after the authentication is performed, uh, there will be a tunnel created between uh, the EPDG and the mobile core network that will grant access to our IMS services. Uh, the procedure is pretty basic, so you just replace EAP authentication with IQv2 authentication. But at first there are some uh, the basic uh, initiating uh, messages between any IPsec tunnel creation. So the keys are negotiated in the first two steps. Then there is an authentication request from the from the user containing their uh, their MC. Then the EPDG will use the diameter interface to to retrieve the authentication data from the AAA. The AAA will uh, retrieve the authentication vectors from the from the HSS. HSS. 
there will be the challenge. Both entities will perform the AKA uh, uh, protocol to negotiate the keys and perform the, the authentication. Then there is the next step that will be uh, done for uh, doing the mobile core anchoring. After that step, the, the user can just call using that uh, encrypted IPsec tunnel. So what we obtain, we obtain that we are giving, making it our voice over Wi-Fi service, our IMS services that normally are available only over our LTE network. We are making it more open. We are making it available over any Wi-Fi network, over any internet access, and while being even more secure while encrypting the, the traffic through, through an IPsec tunnel. So the same question goes for, for voice over Wi-Fi. So can an active attacker uh, f and, uh, find the keys and encrypt? No, they cannot find the keys and encrypt and decrypt uh, the traffic. But actually, they can do a passive attack to find out the, the MSI, the EMC, the, the same value of the user. So actually, the, the EPDG is selected to, through, the, through the DNS procedure. So an active attacker can make a fake free hotspot, respond to the DNS request, uh, request towards the fake EPDG, and get the user EMC. Uh, in voice of our Wi-Fi service, we are not using pseudon EMC yet. By the devices, they are, they are not using them. The solution for that problem is to use uh, to deploy certificate-based approaches like TTLS plus EAPKA or multiple uh, authentication exchanges. Same recommendations were also followed, and this problem was also highlighted by uh, conferences, uh, a conference in Black Hat London uh, by some researchers at uh, the, the University of London. But you have to remember that still the IMSI information might not be considered uh, sensible information, and that information alone cannot lead to any fraud or decrypting the, the APC communication. It's also important that the APDG will have a stronger authentication policy, so we will not deauthenticate the existing users just receiving the, the EMC of, the, of a new request. So let's say the, there is already a, a tunnel set up, then Let's say an attacker will try to uh, to delete our existing uh, user uh, tunnel, the EPD and uh, will do this by requesting a new authentication using its IMC. The EPDG will have to make sure that it will delete the the existing uh, IPsec tunnel only after the first authentication is performed. I'm saying this because I was part of some security audits on the EPDG platform and. One of the EPDG, I'm not going to say the name of the vendor, uh, didn't do that. So you can just attack, just using knowing an IPSI, you can just uh, make sure that the, that user might not ever be able to use a voice over Wi-Fi service while you are attacking it. So what other security stuff are we having on, on our Wi-Fi networks? So wi -Fi, uh, our existing Wi-Fi infrastructures can detect some rogue APs. And uh, they can be classified uh, using rules like the SSID, the network name, the power that we are using. If we want extra protection on this, we can put some APs only in monitor mode in order to do a full-time scan of that uh, possible rogue APs. Also containment of the rogue APs. So what can we do is that to make sure that the we do a, like a, it's actually a denial of service attack for the rogue APs. We can do this if we have enough APs, but uh, it has some legal consequences. So actually we don't recommend doing this. Uh, what we can do, but actually it's using our location services infrastructures that I just told you about that we are using for doing uh, business retail analytics. It's actually we are using the same infrastructures to locate, better locate uh, rogue AP, rogue client, rogue interferers, or uh, attacks. And this is how a map can look, uh, showing different uh, attackers, or rogue APs, or interferers, uh, and uh, what's the magnitude of their, uh, of their influence. Also, some some basic stuff that uh, our Wi-Fi network it's uh, uh, 
uh, resolving it's we are implementing the security mechanism called the management frame protection uh, the problem is that the wireless management frames are uh, not encrypted or not authenticated encrypted or signed so there is a common uh, vector for exploits the beacons the probe and the association so the first part that uh, the first uh, messages when you connect to Wi-Fi network the solution will be to insert the uh, MIC into the management frames so the AP can uh, instantly identify rogue or exploited uh, management frames uh, so I'm gonna go again through through what how we started and how what's our Wi-Fi network and uh, how is uh, the, the uh, its evolution so we first, this is our the Wi-Fi network architecture where the Wi-Fi APs are located in the, let's say, customer location or our location. We have the wireless controllers in our central site. Then when we started to perform the, the captive portal authentication, we added the captive portal platform with the solution for just the authentication and uh, its respective AAA. For the EAPCM authentication, we use the solution called the Wi-Fi gateway that anchors all the Wi-Fi traffic and the AAA. Uh, further, we, do we did the retail business analytics that uses lo localized traffic. And uh, it's also used for localized Wi-Fi attacks. We introduced a new service that you're going to hear about. is the business internet security last year that we are uh, using it most over our Wi-Fi networks. And the last year also we introduced the, the Wi-Fi calling. So continue your journey with Orange. We are the DEFCON Platinum partner. We you should check the business internet security threat map. You already s uh, saw it in the previous presentation. Uh, app to own, we have an app to own, Bug Bounty. You should participate if you like really like hacking. So today we'll be with most security features activated and tomorrow we'll deactivate some of the features and some stuff that you really need to know about is the Wi-Fi pun board. I'm not going to talk uh, tell you actually what it is about, but some of you will probably find out. Let's hope that uh, very few of you. Okay, so my name, uh, uh, my presentation is done. So I'm Vlad Sorich. I'm part of the development and innovation team, and I want to thank you for your attention today. <laughs>